Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch a Track podcast presented by the Dude and Grim Show. I am the Dude. And I am Grim, and today we are going to talk about the album Polly Gondwana Land by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I've been waiting to talk about this one, dude. It's um, a mouthful. It is a mouthful. I, I like that uh, it, it's the the album's title is what they would call a portamento, which is like putting together of two things. So of polygon, <laughs> polygon, like a multi sided figure, and Gondwana land. Hmm. That is quite the combination. So Gondwana land refers to the supercontinent that was said to have existed prior to everything splitting off into the uh, continents that we know today. Hmm. I gotcha. So then it's not just a clever name. No, it's not. No. And dude, I got to say, like, <sighs> so much to say about this album. I, I love so it. I think it is just wonderful. Um, it is the 12th, 12th studio album by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And yeah, and yeah I'll let you ahead. talk about how and it was released, because that is yeah. an interesting story as well. Right, right. Well, it's also not only is it the 12th, but it is the 4th of five that they released in 2017, which is just mind blowing. It, and, well, it is. Know. And the thing is like the other albums aren't shit. Like it's good yeah. music. That's what is crazy to me. Like I look at what came out in that year and I would say three of my favorites, maybe even four are from that year. So flying microtonal banana, fucking sweet i would definitely recommend it i have not given a huge listen to murder of the universe but dude sketches of brunswick east is one of my favorites with the mild high club it's kind of like jazzy and the mild high club yeah and then pony poly gondwana land my favorite of theirs and then gumboot soup dude it's pretty great in one year yeah well, it's interesting too because I know you're you just talked about the name of the album and how it was what whatever that word was where you it, it just kind of merged them together like even when portamento. they were coming up with yeah, yeah portamento <laughs> you know yeah even when they were trying to come up with the band name so these guys formed they're from Melbourne Australia Andrew Skim good buddy of mine I know you're listening do you know of these guys because they're from your hometown man you should know of them okay fuck so, yeah you better yeah um, but dude like. Six guys all went to school together, and uh, initially they, when they were coming up with the name, uh, whatever I think it's, I want to say his name, Stu McKenzie. Is yeah, that right? Stu, Stu McKenzie. McKenzie. Okay, uh, yeah, he he wanted to call the band Gizzard Gizzard, and then somebody else wanted to name it after like Jim Morrison's nickname, which was the Lizard King, and <laughs> so they kind of so they kind of split Set the difference, the and they just yeah. said. You know what? Let's just put it all together. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Dude, that's um, awesome. I did not know that. I wonder how many how many beers and joints it took to really like <sighs> like figure that out. Dude. So another thing that I think is and and I don't think that they are the first to do this because I think that Nine Inch Nails the Slip was released in much the same way. Um, but one of the, one of their albums, I think a couple, I'm pretty, now, I'm yeah. pretty sure the slip was one of them, but they released it completely open source. So yeah. if one were to go to King Giz and the Liz Wiz's website the web. and Just look it. at Polygondwana land, you can download the whole album in MP3 waveform you can do it as a CD master if you wanted to make your own CD. And they even did it as a vinyl master if you wanted to make vinyl, <laughs> which is interesting because as I held up, I oh, have the vinyl of have this here. record because it is my favorite <laughs> of theirs. And this was released by Flightless and ATO Records. But very clearly on the website, I mean, it's... They they have a, a statement here that says, ever wanted to start your own record label? Go for it. 
employer mates, press wax, pack boxes. We do not own this record. You do. Go forth, share, and enjoy. I, I mean, it's, that is like unprecedented, I would argue. Uh, it is. Well, from what I saw, it looks like 88 labels have released this worldwide. Like that's you know, uh, some people like took their advice and they're like, all right, we're going to do it. Like, that's pretty cool, man. Well, it is. And and I noticed I, I want to say I looked at one um, when I was looking up this album on YouTube just to hear different things about it. I want to say there was some company that made a vinyl that was like clear and it had liquid in the middle of it. Whoa. Now, I haven't seen that, but the one that I got is kind of like a four color oh, beach ball. It's yeah, like a beach ball. It is sweet. Dude. I think they call it a four color tie dye, but I mean, it is easily one of the coolest records that I own. And when it's on it the all- turntable, it's <sighs> real obvious. Also, it looks like that game. What was that game in the 80s where it had like four tiles on it and you had it would like beep and you had to try to repeat the beep, the pattern? Simon? Oh, that game? Simon Says. Simon Says? Okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like Simon Says sort of too. But, um, yeah. One thing, now that you bring up the 80s and stuff, one thing I would like to mention is a, a couple shout outs. So I feel like our good friend Forrest Karbowski was like the biggest... Um, the biggest influence for me for getting into King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, but I think Leifer probably also had something to do with it as well. Who? Leifer. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Um, but as I'm looking for this, so thank you to them, first of all, for getting me into it, because this is one of the greatest bands I've ever heard, bar none. But one thing I found was on YouTube, when you look this up, there isn't a whole lot about it, whether it's articles right. or the wiki Interviews or whatever. Or yeah. Yeah, shit, yeah, there isn't a whole lot. But there is this YouTube video called Poly Gondwana Land 8-Bit. And it is by the YouTuber called 8-Bit Escapes. And this dude has also done other... King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard albums in the style of Nintendo 8-bit music. Like he limits himself to this format and <clears throat> makes the music. So there's Infest the Rat's Nest, Oddments, Fishing for Fishies, Murder of the Universe, Flying Microtonal Bananas, Sketches of Brunswick East, Gumboot Soup, Poly Gondwana Land, I'm in Your Mind Fuzz, and Nanagon Infinity. So like I, I mean, a, he's a fan, super fan. Absolutely. And the, and the, the shit is awesome. Like when I listened to Polygon Duana land, I, I was unbelievable. It, it was unbelievable. I was blown away. And the oh. thing is, dude, if you look up this dude's video, it would appear as that dude made a fucking Nintendo game that you can get. And when you put it in the console, it just has this basic graphic and you can select any of their albums and just listen to it. Dude, that man, I want to buy that. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. But of course, they only made a few of them. And like, because I still have my 8-bit edition. going like it would it yeah. would be sweet. But like, anyway, it's pretty cool. Well, it's it's interesting that you say and we'll uh, get into this, I think, when we talk about the songs is. To me, this album and their songs has a real video game 8-bit just sound to it. So it's, it translates perfectly well. And there's certain sections. I know there's a band that you're aware of um, called The Advantage, who basically yes. takes old Nintendo songs and covers them as like a band. Yeah, and there's sure. certain there there's certain parts in these songs where I'm like, oh my gosh, it sounds so much like The Advantage playing a nintendo song in, i know in some of them and but it's so, it's so clean really and through. it's produced so well but i know what you mean like you get that feel and that's why when i listened to that eight bit thing of this album i was like it's it's fucking perfect like i i mean it translates so well it does well and that's one thing that uh, just about this album i found as a whole is uh, i felt like the sound is actually very clean uh, in in the synths in in the instrumentation that they yeah. use, there's not a lot of distortion. The the vocals and the are flutes. double double and tripled. The flutes are gorgeous. Yeah, the flutes are really Stu nice. Because I think Stu plays the flute. 
He does. He does. Yeah. And uh, somebody in, they also use in a couple of the tracks, a harmonica. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting to hear the harmonica sound because they use it in a way you don't typically hear it. Like typically you and I, when we hear the harmonica, it's from like a blues yes. kind of background and it has that sound. But man, they really use it in such a different way here. It was, I'm I just, really glad uh, you said uh, that, dude. I, I think I that's a or two. I got, yeah. absolutely yeah. right on. And, and it was like it didn't... Um, yeah, it, it, for some reason, that wasn't like one of the things that was in like my mental list of what I was going to discuss. But right on because they do. And it it is so, so different, I think, for for yeah. what we would think of. Yeah. But. Well, even them, you know, even them as a band. I mean, this album, I mean, I think the genre we'd call it probably psychedelic rock. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's pretty much what it is. But it's really interesting because I don't know another band. I would really compare them to there's certain elements when I listen to I this album that that almost th- there are some times where it does remind me of maybe a little bit of Pink Floyd, some early Sid Barrett, Pink Floyd, that kind of stuff. I couldn't say like a whole song, but there's certain sections that I hear that yeah, my sure. ears just just kind of perk up. But I actually kind of also think about, um, you know, if you compare them to their their country mates, you know, Tame Impala. Um, with Kevin Parker there he's also the first two albums are those would be considered kind of psychedelic rock yeah too. sure and it's and they're both very different like very very different yeah they are I, I just you know so and he um, went in a it, totally different direction and they went in like every direction you could I mean if you yeah. think about let's start with just well I, I almost think it, god I don't I don't when couldn't you start but I mean if you go back to 15, and I know this wasn't the first release, but Paper Mache, Dream Balloon, that's real like 60s poppy and everything. And then not and then Nonagon Infinity is the next album in 2000 in 2016. And that's like a real like rock album. Like it's kind of hard. I mean, it's not like metal but it's hard sure but then if you're like oh well yeah they couldn't do metal then fast forward to 2019 infest the rats rat's nest is like their speed metal album dude infest the rat's nest that's a great title i like it yeah i don't know i just feel like they can do anything they want and i mean you can do anything you put your mind to yeah so when did when did they start here dude what do you mean? Like 2010, 2010. Yeah. So from 2010, you got one. Two. He's counting for everyone. Not listening. 16 albums, including KG that's coming out uh, shortly this year. And I can't wait to listen to that. I mean, dude, which it, will actually precede, I believe this episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it, we'll do it, it first. It listen, might. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that as long as we got our shit done in time. <laughs> yeah, but I just they're they're so prolific and it's it's utterly impressive what they can pull off. I, I mean, uh, it just it really is because all yeah. of it's done really well. Well, this album was actually it was very well received by critics as well. Um, you know, Pitchfork, I think they had it ranked uh, number 17 on their best rock albums of t- 2017. Um, which is, you know, this is a, this is, again, this is a band who isn't necessarily like a household name. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. That's interesting though. Cause I read Pitchfork's interview and I will say I didn't love it. Mm. Now I guess I you may mean interview or re- review the review or, of it. Uh, okay, it was yeah. a review of the album and I, I don't know. I felt like, I felt like in some ways they characterized it as just like, almost kind of gimmicky like psychedelic kind of just mumbo jumbo at times i mean they still gave it a pretty good it was like 7.5 out of 10 but uh let's uh relate that to the scale that we were in in school that's a fucking c and dude this album is way better than a fucking c i'm sorry it is way better than a c yeah it is i i dude i, I dig it man it's it's it just and we'll talk about this dude it 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 is sort of a, I mean, I guess you could say it's like a concept album. It has a theme that the sound pretty much, it yeah. stays very consistent in its sound. Like if you listen to this, you can just put it on, man. You can just go. And actually, 
the album itself, I don't know if we want to start getting into the tracks quite yet, but it is, um, what is this, 10, 10 tracks? But you could actually break it down into pretty much four tracks. Because after the first song, like there are three songs that kind of all flow into each other. Like, I, you know, songs, it's, it's funny you say break. that, which to me so. has uh, has or will make this an incredibly difficult Tough one to scratch. To scratch. Mm-hmm. Now, dude, was the first time you heard this when we were at my house and I and I dropped the, the record? No, I I don't think so. Would that okay. have been last this past Christmas? Yeah, I had heard it a year before ago. then. I'm pretty sh- sure I heard it before then. Maybe okay. not though. Who's to say? Who's to say? I'm sure that was a long night. That was a good moment. Abuse. So yeah, um, yeah, it was a good night. Um, yeah, and it, that's one thing I'll say. And what makes it tough to scratch some of these ones the way we do is this album flows together so you take a track away and it's it it, you know all of a sudden you kind of have a hole like you know along with like dark side and stuff like that yeah um you know it it when you get an album that just flows like this uh that can that can definitely be a challenge so no i'm with you dude and uh yeah i mean Mm. i don't know what else I can say about this until we actually start getting into the tracks other than I I love it very dearly. And it was like when we decided we were going to do this, I was so excited just to have a reason to listen to it again, like five times in a row. Yeah, I know. Well, that's (laughs) the thing about it, dude. No, it's also, again, it's one of those albums that you can put on and you get lost in it. You really do because it is a journey and, 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 and goes so well. Nothing. You don't get. I if myself don't get tired of it. There's no songs that are like overly obtrusive, right? Where you're it's just like you, like jarring. You're like, oh, okay. Or you're um, like, I would you know, obviously skip this one. Yeah, yeah. Like part of me, you know, I hit play and I don't even know where I'm at in the album. Like when I, you know, yeah. hit pause or turn turn it off or move on to, you know, get back from the store or whatever. So, um, so I, dude, I think I think we kind of again uh, can get get into this this album if you want. Yeah. And start. Oh yeah. You know, getting, into, getting into the track. So, well, the fir- it's I found it kind of interesting that because the first track ha- has goes in a bunch of different directions. Oh, it's it called does. Crumbling, Crumbling Castle. It's a ten minute song, so it really kind of almost know, goes. eleven. I I mean it's like, closer yeah, to eleven. 11. Yeah, yeah. 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 Eleven. Um, but. I was kind of curious, just even in the creating of this album, how I kind of mentioned that it really is kind of four songs. Because if you look at tracks two, three, and four, five, six, and seven, and then eight, nine, and ten, each one of those, they all flow into each other. So I'm like, why would you start off with an 11-minute song that has transitions and flows, and then the next and then the next nine, you, you break those up? Not that it matters. I was just kind of no, curious. No, dude, you know. it's funny you say that. And I was actually going to bring up things and talking about the songs, why you could do that. Um, uh-huh. It's like they're animals, in a sense. Yeah. But so Crumbling Castle. Crumbling Castle. Yes, I digress. I mean, um, it, it's, it starts out uh, kind of, I mean, in some ways it, Reminds me of like a rock band's version of Castlevania. But one thing, and of course it goes into all these sections. It gets kind of hard at the end and all this stuff. But one thing that always gets me is at about just before two minutes, there's this key change and they go up to this chord and and solo a little bit. And I wish I could have that like five more times in the song. (laughs) I I love it. Yeah. 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 I love it. Well, I mean, it is like right away. I remember and maybe it was when you put it on for me or the first time I listened to it. Uh, as soon as I like heard just the intro and the just beginning, I was like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to like this. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, sure. I, I just knew. Yeah. It. Um, I, I knew it was something different. I knew it's my ears just just, you know, just absorbed it. And uh, again, like the sound is very clean. The, the I think the first thing that really also stood out to me was the vocal harmonies. Um, and they're just, they're doubled and tripled. They're just so much depth yeah. to, to the vocals and it's pretty consistent all the way through the whole, the whole album. Um, yeah. that kind of, I don't, I don't know if I'd say effect, but, um, but the, yeah, the layering, the, the, the layering <laughs> of the vocals and, and I could see some people maybe not digging that as much. I dig it. I, 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 I kind of like it cause it gives it this, 
it has a very like almost cult cultish chanty oh yeah type yeah, yeah, yeah. sound to it sure uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty trippy for sure um very psychedelic very oh yeah psychedelic. and and it's like that that song itself is almost like a microcosm of the album because it, it's like a journey within itself right and then you get to polygon duana land and it's, the self-titled it, it track. has like a more almost peaceful kind of happy sound to it, but it's still really trippy. And man, the way they use the synths just with like opening up the filter and the, I mean, dude, it's no, it is good. And, and the one thing that really stood out to me, you know, it starts off with kind of this simple drum and then, and then the bass playing and they do that a few times. There's not one thing they don't do in this album. There's uh there's a lot of transitions many transitions but there's not a like uh, there's they're not sharp or, or jarring they, no. they flow very very well into uh, one like another. almost to the point where you said where you can get kind of lost in it and forget that you're like a couple forward by that point yep yeah but and this I, one I, this oh, one has they, our flute which is good. yeah Stu, and they hit that Stu diminished chord and oh man we're gonna get there <laughs> we don't need no whereabouts Oh, it's so uh, good. Da, 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 so da, da, da. Good. Yeah. Um, well, so so this song and then the next two, uh, The Castles in the Air and uh, Deserted Dunes Welcome Weary Feet. Uh, I feel like these are like, like I kind of said, like three songs that you can all put together because they all they all they all transition into to one another. There's no yeah, real they do. And, and I do like anything. one thing I like is they only do this once in the album, but the narration in the castle With in the, the air. I just... The woman's she voice has, and yeah, it's kind of like sp- uh, to me. It spoken. sounds like she's like she's like reading a story or something. Like well, yeah, that and what, I like that because it's like. it's a really trippy story. Like the the river opened her mouth and spat into the you know the the sea, and it was like bigger than the sky. I don't know. It's it's just it's really kind of like psychedelic and and dreamy. You know, well, the, like the scene. Yeah, and if you listen to their lyrics, I will say that's that's one thing. Uh, the lyrics are very um, kind of, I mean, they're trippy and mm-hmm. they're kind of all over the place. And I, I think it is maybe sometimes if I'm just listening, I have a hard time like under other than like some of the main choruses and like phrases. Yeah, but but some of the things they're saying is just like it, well, it's, dude, it's if sung and said in, in a way. I have the the lyric sheet here as you oh, pull out the game. But man. check out this picture of Stu. Like, this is sweet, too, where he's, like, down in his car rocking. and everything. That's pretty cool. Dude, that's kind of, yeah, it's very cool. A lot of pedals, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and he's playing an electric uh, 12, so that's kind of cool, too. But That is pretty dope. Yeah, they have all the lyrics, and it's like, I mean, if you don't know what the lyrics are and you read the sheet, it's exactly what you would expect. I mean, like to the fucking T, it's exactly what you would expect. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Like, okay. The river opened her mouth and spat into a vast sea, larger and bluer than a cloudless sky, muscular, prodigious, immortal. But our vessel was invulnerable. It was well built. The boat rocked me into sleep and I floated through a deep dream. I mean, like, it's like exactly what you would think it should say. Where are the drugs? Yeah. Oh, the drugs? Dude. Yeah. A lot of drugs. Um, anyways. So then we so move it, on to uh, deserted, deserted Dunes Welcome Weary Feet. Now, they certainly it's, do. It's interesting because this song is like a um, like a reprise of uh, Polygondwana Land. Like they go into they that same that. riff. Yeah, it, it, but I but it. I and mean, it's like yeah, it's good. like the exact same riff in this song. I mean, like no for no, you know, and then but it's a little harder and they kind of change it up on the other parts a little bit. But they keep they kind of hold that riff, which I think is cool. Well, I feel like they do that many times on the album. And to be honest, I get, again, so lost in the album that I'm the, you. they pull out like the all these other parts from other songs and i'm just like I, what is going like where is this from because i feel like i've heard it before so it's yeah. like they revisit a lot of those themes and sounds i feel like over oh, and yeah. over again and even if they're not exact they sound really close but i know but this one this one is exact. i mean it's it's like a reprise which 
sets up an interesting thing that we we'll, get to well, when, so, when we pull well, out. So he, yeah, well, one thing with this song that I really felt is in the middle, um, th they use the synth, and it's like this arpeggiating synth, and it really oh, reminded yeah. me. Dude, like you Stranger know what Things. Me? Oh, well, like Stranger Things. Actually, there's a... I'll get to that in a little bit. No, what it reminds me of actually is On the Run by Pink Floyd. It's a little oh, less dark okay. and a little slower. And, but and, it really and, it's, and it's thicker. Like like On the Run yeah. is very like, do -do 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 -do. like it's well, that's kinda, like, you know what yeah. I mean? To me, it, it's, it's, they, it's slowed down a little bit. It's, it's yeah, I guess, yeah, separated. Sure. I, I don't know what the right word is. Do you need to kill your cat? Uh, wishes? No, but I just need him to go somewhere else where I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, so. we don't have our studio yet, you guys. I know. We're, we're, I know. we're getting. We have almost seventy-seven subscribers. We've getting a lot more views lately. So, so just you know, give it a little it's bit. Coming. And you'll get a it's fucking coming. cat condo. So, inner cell, <laughs> dude. One, I, I mean, if not, so much better. Than I would, I would cell. like say top three for me, inner cell. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, gosh, you know, I didn't. That's one thing I didn't do. I didn't mark what I... Uh, no, actually, I think I did mark what my favorite song is. I don't think we've gotten there yet, but okay. Dude, Inner Cell, I, I just... Continue. I Sorry. love... It's kind of like a different sort of mode or scale that they're in, and it's kind of dark and almost Eastern, and it's it's just... Um, man, it's... It, it's so good, like nothing else that, that I know. Yeah. Well... It, Again, this is where there is a clear break in between the previous song and this song. So this is where I kind of group the next three songs together. And, well, yeah, um, this would probably be the side change. Yeah, what I mean is, do you have, what what is it on your uh, record? Where where does it flip? That's a great point. I would hope. I would. It would have to be. I would if, think so, but they don't even say it. But I can tell you by the grooves. I was gonna say because "Crumbling Castle" is su is a, such a long song that it would have to be. Or yeah, that would that would be it. It would change the inner okay. cell. Yeah, okay. that's how they cut it. That makes sense. Um, so, anyways, yeah, this this one actually reminds me. There's certain sections and parts of it that kind of remind me of some early Barrett Floyd a little bit. Um, oh, really? I couldn't okay. think of. I couldn't like think of what song, but it's almost just like. Just kind of the overall general sound, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the general feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, okay. You know, again, the vocals are very similar to all the other songs. Um, and, uh, yeah, it does... It, it's funny, at certain points, it does sound like, you know, it has this cultish, like, darker darker feel. And even, like, the lyrics, dude. From under the skin, the flesh is rotten, poison is oh, spread. Oh, yeah. Through, through words unsaid. I mean, dude. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty great. Um, yeah. And, th and then we move. Okay, so then we move on into loyalty, and this is this to me. This is the Stranger Things feel to me. This one. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I can I, see that because yeah. they go into yeah. that synth arpeggio Dude, again, and it's yeah, it's so thick. Like right in the beginning of that song, it's just so thick, man. Yeah, and it also kind of has like sort of this. I keep bringing up Pink Floyd, um, but like an animal's feel, and and I guess maybe mm -hmm. that's something. You know, would you say like? I don't know if you're a general Pink Floyd fan. Do you think you should be a, a like? I would highly recommend it, people who are into Floyd listen to this. I mean, I, everybody I don't know should how listen you, to I, it. Like, but. okay, if you like animals, like how in the fuck couldn't you like this album? Like, I, I, I don't. I wouldn't. That would not compute with me because they're they're just like, yep. yeah. I, it just wouldn't no. compute. So I would hope that if you like animals, wish you were here. You know, like. Pink Floyd, you would like mm. this. Yeah. Well, one thing, one thing with this song too, and I noticed this a few times on the album. I feel like the they they um the bass is is very noticeable, and not just I'm talking about. There's there are certain sections where they let the bass just kind of do its own thing for like a little bit, but I do find it's actually like the the volume of it is. It stands out a little more. Uh, it's for some reason the bass to me is one of those instruments that when I'm listening to a record, sometimes it can got, kind of get lost a little bit in in the background. Yeah, like, and I like, like that it doesn't. Yeah, like if you removed it, you would probably be like, oh, uh, you know. And I'm just talking about music and al some albums in general. Like if you took the bass away, you'd notice that hey, something's missing. But in in here, like, I feel like they they yeah. really use it. They ex, they such an integral part of all of it. No, that's a that I was another thing. I guess I wanted to say too. 
But yeah, it, and it sounds so Mysterious good and, and like natural, you know, it, it's mm-hmm. not. Yeah, that, that's one thing I guess I like is it's it's interesting because everything like like we kind of already said, but everything is really clean. And with that, everything is also really clear. Yeah. And that helps. So there's no, you know, when you don't get into like the muddy stuff, the things yeah. don't get covered up and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's another thing that makes the the album very cohesive is yeah, there's, not, sure. there, there's not a lot of things that kind of take you out of, I guess, the journey or the experience of actually listening to the album. No, agreed. Um, agreed. So then, and so you go to horology. Now, one horology. of the things about horology that I like is there's these flute arpeggios that he's doing. Um, like it, sure. it just it's really if I didn't know better, I would have thought they used a Mellotron, but I know that he can play the flute and does in many cases. So I'm going to naturally assume that that's real flute and it sounds just right. gorgeous. And it's, it's interesting cause it's got like kind of a high tone, but it's also got a warmth to it. And I think that yeah. with, with all the brightness of the other stuff, it really blends well. It does. And it's funny you say that because I was actually going to, before I dug a little deeper and saw that someone actually played the flute on this album, I was going to ask, I was like, dude, is, is that like a real flute or is that something else? And then I saw saw that it was. So, I Well, because, you know, that's, Strawberry that's Fields is like the Mellotron flutes, right? The intro to Strawberry right, right. Fields. Yeah. And it sounds pretty legit. And I mean, it's the Mellotron is actually a bank of real recorded sounds. So it would sound more legit than like a fake flute flute but this sounds like better yet because it's totally real and you know it's so real yeah so 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 real real. well so it's kind of cool that this again there's a clean break in between this Mm -hmm. song and then in the next one but actually the lyrics of this song um reference the next song where it says it says sit down weary traveler uh i am I am that what you seek. Join me in a meal. And then there's some other lyrics, but then it, it and that section ends up with, you know, now you know the truth uh, behind. It's tetrachromacy. Tetrachromacy. So that's yeah. basically, okay, so that title lends itself into Chromacy. the fourth color, right? Because tetra is like four. Ah. I think that's like a chemistry term, like tetrachloride, you know, like four parts chloride, something that like that. Sense. So I, it, it, and so you got the fourth color. So to me, I'm like, okay, if you got three primary colors, right? Three. Yes. Yeah. What is it? it? Red, blue, and yellow? Red, blue, and yellow. Yeah. 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 So yeah. this is like the fourth one that like you can't perceive or we're not like our brains aren't ready to perceive yet. So this is like the fourth, the fourth color, like the fourth primary color. Dude, I love it, man. It's yeah. Great. Yeah, it's trippy. Cool. Wait, is it red, blue and yellow or red, blue and green? No, because yellow and blue make green. That's right. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Anyways. But anyways, I love how this starts with just a very simple single picked acoustic guitar and they let the notes ring and when i listen to it on my record player there's almost like a little bit of warble just from you know like and it, and it sounds to me like it was done on tape now i don't know if they recorded it on tape but just that little bit of warble like gives me this illusion that it was done on was. like an old school tape machine which i i like thinking that whether it was or not yeah well, and I think this is the um, in this song. I mean, until really, I, I don't know uh, if there is acoustic, but this is the most prevalent. Oh, there's I a think. lot of acoustic, but well, it's usually doubled most... with like a synth. So right. it has a and different. Is, it, it stands out. This is the track where it stands out the most yeah. to me. Yep, I would. Um, give, I, yeah, and, I'll give you that. And, and uh, you know, so so in that sense, it sounds very different than yeah. than a lot. No, of, I agree. Uh, a lot of the because other it's tracks. like but, on its own. You know, it's not yeah, like but with, it's, the, with the synths and stuff. 
stuff. It is, but it still sounds again. It still sounds. It has that carries that same feel and that same theme. Like I know. I just feel like I feel like the whole album just has this theme that it just holds the pretty much the whole time. Well, um, and and at the end of the song, as the synth comes in, I, dude, I can only describe it as a complete fucking eargasm when it goes from tetrachromacy to fucking searching, and that synth is just one like. Way to say it. <laughs> Like it just sinks down and the drums come in and shit like on, on searching. I'm just like every time I'm like, can I just listen to that like 10 more times? Just that fucking transitions because it's so over goddamn. and over. Yeah. Well, it's constant. And then. Yeah. Constant loop. Well, just kind of how I was saying the previous song, Tetrachromacy. That's the first time we've really heard the acoustic sound like that. Um, the beginning of this song, this song, the that the percussion and the alternate yes. percussion is the first time we've kind of heard that. I, sound. I know so it's, it, it's 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 stand brand new out as well. that way, and it, and yeah. it's like they they tune the drums right. The drums are tuned to like this dark key that the rest of it's in. So like the synth, the synth like drops down right to this note and it's holding, and then. Like the drums that come in give you this whole different feel harmonically of what the song would be because they're tuned to where it's going, but it still goes with the dropped note, you know. And oh, dude, I, I could it listen to that. With the blow. Like I could just have blow. that on repeat, really, for a long time. A long time. Uh, yes. Well, then we, you know, we. Get into the fourth with the three fourth periods. Color. Yeah. Yes. Then we get into the fourth color, man. Yeah. Right. Dude, that's yeah. that's what tetrachromacy is all about. It's just what it is, man. Like the, the journey. fucking the color you didn't even know about the fourth one. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Um, yeah. Again, this one transitions right into it. Uh, this is kind this, of via synth thing a little bit again. Yeah. Which is yeah. sweet. And that's what I I feel like this song kind of. It is the last track on the album. I feel like it does kind of sum every the whole album up. Um, oh yeah, kind of brings in a lot of a lot of those uh, parts. But yeah, dude, the guitar like really moves in the intro. It's 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 yeah. It's it doesn't good, waste time it getting into it, and I like how no. they do a tease at the end, right? Like it right. ends, and then it dude. just like comes back in just to slap right. you in the mouth one more time. Well, or there the is ears. kind of that. Yeah, I mean, it goes for about a minute, and it's just kind of like this quiet synth sort of soundscape. Yeah, you know, and then um, yeah, and then it kind of like, comes back kidding. in. Well, and then it, I almost find it interesting that they did this because I almost feel like it sort of breaks the feel of the album right at the end because that's when it gets kind of the wildest and like the drum solo and the guitars are roaring and kind of. Play, dude, it sounds like a village is just being like destroyed. No, you're or right, and it's funny you say that because at the end of that, if you like that kind of wild sound, there are sounds like that on the album Nonagon Infinity with like the harmonica because I know the harmonica is going in the end of that one, right? And that that like to me almost like bridges that to Nonagon Infinity. In some weird way, you could just yeah. put all five albums together, or you could maybe. Well, you and that's from use... the previous year. That's not even one of the five. Oh. They were just oh. like, "Oh, hey, by the way, yeah, we'll fucking take it back to Nonagon if you want." Like, we'll, yeah, do, we'll it. do that. Well, I, it, dude, it, they maybe there's something like the, you know the Flaming Lips with the Zayrik album. Maybe if you play all five albums at the same time. You know, some weird yeah. shit will happen. I don't There's know. There's a, there is, a, I don't know who did this, but there also is a funny YouTube video I saw during the quarantine period. And there is a guy who's a huge King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard fan. And then his friend, like, has never heard him. And so they do this experiment and like in 24 hours, he has to listen to every fucking album they have. And dude, Whoa. his reaction at the end, he was like, they're pretty awesome. Damn, that's. I was awesome, surprised. Man. I was surprised Oof. it wasn't just straight up scanners. Just, yeah. you know, like he's like, I don't know. Oh, uh, that'd be that'd be rough. I, it I would know. Be hard for me to, to. I mean, I guess you know, you could definitely do it with this bad, but it'd be hard to listen to a band that you've never Any, listened to. Yeah, before I know for like twenty four hours because and yeah, Ugh. and dude, just like we used to say, 
at a country place and welcome to the rest of your day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, pretty, like, I mean, they, yeah, I'm just going to sit here and don't uh, get scared now. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think I think I'm on the tee, homie. I think you are on the tee. I think I am. So I, this is going to be a controversial one. I'm sure. I already, I already know what it is. Um, well, because it's hard to, you know, when you're like taking a piece away from a puzzle and it's, you know. I know. What's it going to do? It's going to leave a hole. So I actually scratched the castles in the air. And the reason, so that's track three. Mm-hmm. And the reason I did it is because I appreciate the, I guess, spoken word, her, the female voice, her, but it kind of takes me out of the the album. And, okay. and I'm curious as to, I think there's a part of me that maybe if they would have, maybe not done it too much, but if, if they would have dropped it in in a few other sections, I, I just don't know if it fits. I, I guess I that's understand. my... My, my my thing with it um it just I, I felt like it was a little out of place like i'm trying to figure out like where where it came from and maybe there's a bigger overarching theme and story and everything to this album that i just haven't you know i haven't maybe you're not ready got, for it. gotten yet <laughs> it's possible i'm just not ready for it but as of right now you know until i don't I get it yeah it, i don't yeah, get it <laughs> you know so i guess i'm not invited you know i don't yeah. know uh, and so so that's what I went with, dude. That's what I went with. Hopefully we're not going to overtime because I don't have a backup. Oh, Shit. Are we going overtime? Oh, over, over, yeah, over dude. Time. Okay. Let the thing go. Let it fucking go twice if it needs to. Yeah, dude, that's Dude, two albums in a row. Actually, I do got one I can scratch, so never mind. And I'll tell you why this one was hard for me. I, I like the narration. I think it's just kind of a weird twist in the journey. Uh-huh. Um, but I think partly I could scratch that. But but then the interesting thing is, if you do scratch that, then you go right into Deserted Dunes, Welcome Weary Feet. And so you go from Polly Land into Polly Land fucking reprise, basically, with nothing that in makes between. Sense. And that's kind of trippy, but that castle in the air would still be my scratch overtime yep. or not. Okay. All so, right. dude, we're in overtime. All right. Are you the Islanders or the Capitals? <laughs> the Capitals. You I lose then. You lose the series. Islanders win the series and the game. Oh, that's right. That's right. But and the game. Fucking Pat, Pat LaFontaine, man. It was good. All right, so I guess I will go and pick the last track or the next scratch, which happens to actually be the last track. And the reason I went with that one is because, again, that ending part where it goes into the soundscape for like a minute and a half or a minute or so, and then it kind of like blows up and explodes. And again, I feel like they kind of you know, maybe broke a little bit of the flow of the album. Or I just wasn't, I, I yeah, you know, okay. it, it just, it gets a little too, a little too wild. I liked the, just the smooth ride we were on. And I mean, I guess if you are going to blow shit up at the end, I mean, that's the that's place. That's a great to do way it, to do it. You know, but, um, so that's, uh, that's the one I go with, I guess. Well, <laughs> but I mean, in all seriousness, that would probably like, Given I couldn't do the other one, that would be mine because, dude, searching is just. You could, well, fuck, I don't know. Actually, I thought about searching too. I did. Oh no, I didn't think about searching oh. because the the transition from tetachromacy to searching is just too goddamn amazing for me. Like I couldn't take either of those away f- just for that. Um, I guess I kind of thought about maybe loyalty. And I I like the song I, I Loyalty a lot. Sometimes, dude, I'll start I'll start the album there just because I love I, the I intro can see, so much. Oh, uh, dude, fucking Inner Cell, come I on, know. man, god damn, dude. Yeah. isn't it? Uh, it's what the scholars would call a real shit pickle. That's right, those smart people like us. But all right, well, we can't go any farther than two scratches because no, you know, it's not allowed. It's just not allowed. So. Um, all right. Well, Grim, I think that officially scratches Polygon Land. Um, what's yes, the name indeed, of the, dude. what's the name of their album that's coming out in a week KG. or two? 
Oh, okay. So that's actually out now. So we're going back to the future, sort of, but not really. And yeah, um, this episode's coming out on Wednesday. So hopefully, if we get our shit together, that means the uh, previous episode that Ideally. we just ca- came out with is called KG. We would be doing our kind of first initial impressions of that. And, and I can't uh, wait for that. Or dude, I couldn't wait for that. It was amazing. Because it already happened. Because it already happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. This so is now it, we're getting like back to the future. And I is. don't know what's in the fucking the picture, picture anymore. I don't know. Either, <laughs> I don't know what's in there. Dude, they're like Not stuff. that Mickey oh. Mouse shirt, though. No, I do. That's what I thought. <laughs> um, yeah. That was for not. you, Forrest. That was you for you, buddy. Um, so I think, uh, yeah. So if you guys are listening to this and you want to hear our initial impressions of what their newest album is like, check out the episode we put out on Monday, hopefully. And uh, otherwise, you know, look these guys up. It's a they're a trippy band. If you're into psychedelic stuff, you like Pink Floyd. Great band. That, yeah, dude. It's a, you know great look, good drummer. So yeah, highly recommend. Well um, so if you guys are still listening to us, please like, please subscribe, give us some comments, let us know what you think. Yeah, do you guys have, scratch it, your have way. any? What would you guys scratch? And are there other King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard albums that we should kind of put on the list for 2021? Other than Nonagon know. Infinity and Microtonal Banana, right off the bat, yes, I, that would be a good question. Yes, other and or sketches so. of Brunswick Bees. Fuck, there, there's a lot of them, and they're so really good. Them. They're we so could just dedicate, dude. That dude get a, dedicated 24 hours. We could dedicate like a good three months to King. Yeah. Lizard, oh, Lizard, easy, so. easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we just start a separate channel for them. Yeah. Okay. I would. All right. They're they're worth we'll, it. We'll. Yes, we've waffled on long enough, so it is time to go. The Dude and Grim Show. We are out. Thank you. Scratch Your Track is produced by The Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore. That's dot, 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 M O R E. And the Tims, T I M N Z. Copyright 2020. The Dude and Grim Show. <laughs> <laughs>